What is going on guys, Pat on the shop. And uh, tonight I wanted to do a little tech tip about high lift on Vortec heads and something to look out for if you're gonna be going that route. The reason I'm, I'm bringing that up is because of our dyno meal here. This is the, the 355 that we're gonna be using uh, for our intake test. As you can see, if you've seen the last video, uh, we have the Edelbrock dual quad air gap intake sitting on top of here looking pretty cool. Uh, this is a 10 to 1 small block Chevy, a little bit over cammed with a 235, 241 at 50 hydraulic roller cam, but it's going to be about 580 lift. Uh, so fairly aggressive and a lot more than you would normally run on a Vortec head. So we should be able to really tax these manifolds and see what's going on uh, and see which one comes out on top. Let me pull one of these heads off. I just set them on for mock-up so we could get a nice look of how this is all going to come together. Before we roll into our uh, high lift Vortec heads here, I want to give a shout out to Viver. Um, these guys are reaching out to a lot of content creators and YouTubers and uh, just saying, hey, do you guys need anything? You want to try anything out? And that's exactly what happened to me. They reached out to me when I was doing my shop reno and I was actually looking at this bench because it was the right size I needed. And I'll put a, a link below and they also sent me a discount code if you're interested. I think it's like 5% off. If you're interested in stuff from them, I, I never owned anything from them before. And uh, they reached out to me and said, hey, do you need anything? I said, actually, yeah, I've been looking at this bench. Uh, I like the size of it. It's got a built-in USB port for my lights and my GoPro stuff. Uh, and uh, it was it's just exactly what I'm looking for. Black kind of matches my other Husky stuff that I have. And uh, they said, perfect, we'll send you one. I was like, okay, great. They, they end up sending me two of these bad girls. So um, as far as a review, uh, they're not the most heavy duty. I'd say they're not as heavy duty as my Husky stuff, uh, but they work great for what they want. I'm going to be building a fixture for assembling heads so I can spin heads around and stuff and mount it to that. Uh, but I bolted it to the wall, just a couple of screws in the back, added some accessories and hooks and stuff to it. Uh, and it's work. It's perfect for what I need. It's adjustable height. It's a nice bench for the money compared to other stuff out there. Um, but uh, by no means as a freestanding bench uh, would I don't think it would be the best bet. Uh, but as soon as obviously you secure a bench to a wall like you should anyway, uh, this is a, a great option for someone looking for a bench. It's just not as heavy duty, I would say, as my Husky stuff. But I just wanted to say thanks, Viva, for sending me this. I really appreciate it. Uh, and it, it's working out perfectly. Okay, so this is our tricked out Vortec head for our uh, dyno mule motor here. This is uh, has had some work done to this. Obviously, not a stock, stock Vortec head. You can see it's been uh, drilled and cut for guide plates. Uh, the guides have been cut down, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Uh, these heads were mostly what you see here when I got them. I, uh, I got them uh, with a package of a bunch of other stuff. And... Uh, so they were mostly done. I've added 1.6 exhaust valves and done some porting and stuff. Um, but I wanted to show you something. I'm going to pop a couple of these valve springs off and show you what's going on. These heads are going to be set up to run up to 600 lift. Uh, and uh, obviously machine work is needed at that point. If you've seen some of my other videos, you, I'll show you how you can run um, up to you know 550 lift without even machining anything. Uh, but at that point, guide plates are a good idea because you lose the valve stem uh, where you don't have enough uh, room for a self-aligning rocker arm and that's when you need the guide plates. Um, this, as you can see on these heads though, uh, it's the same thing applies. There's not enough room for uh, running a self-aligning rocker arm. So that's why we have guide plates. Okay, so take a peek here at our valve guide. You can see it's not looking like a stock Vortec guide. That's because it's cut down. Right now, um, we have about 700 thou uh, retainer to seal clearance, which is a lot more than factory, uh, obviously. But you can see what, when they cut these, they cut, they got rid of this second step, which they normally are, or first step, however you want to say it. You can see the line where it, where it was before. This is the issue I have. If, if you're going to have your, your guides cut down, you're doing themself, leave yourself about a hundred thou step here. The reason being, you want something for your beehive spring, if you're running a spring like this, to center on. See, right now it can just dance around uh, and there's no locator for the spring. Uh, if you if they would have ran just or left just a little bit of a hundred thousand step there, we would have had tons of steel retainer to seal clearance still, uh, and also um, been able to keep our, our valve spring happy. The, the fix I've done for that is modified a set of comp cams um, uh, ID locators 
to fit the Beehive Springs. They were machined here, and they were also machined slightly on the ID to fit this size because it's an oddball size, and uh, I couldn't find any one that makes one for this setup, and I wanted to run these Summit Racing or their pack valve springs. Uh, these guys are about 135 on the seat, and they should work really nicely for what we're doing. Um, the issue being two things is, uh, first of all, these you know these IDs uh, are expensive, and you're, you have to modify them, which is not great. And the second thing is this thickness right here takes away from your installed height, so you end up running a longer valve or offset keepers uh, to get your 1.8 installed height. If you were just to put these in, that's 50 thou off your installed height, that's 50 thou off what your valve spring uh, can be. So if you're if it's a 600 lift valve spring like these and we're taking 50 thou off our installed height, now it's a 550 lift valve spring, which defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make these heads go to 600 lift without an issue. We're gonna be fine, we're right at uh, our 1.8 1.8 installed height so these heads will be good for 600 lift we have tons of clear retainer to seal clearance but it was just a little extra work that we had to do to make this work and a little extra money if we would have uh if i I don't know who did these heads, but if we would have left a little bit of a step there, we would have had something to locate our valve spring. We would have had a little bit more room for getting our spring heights, and we wouldn't have had to modify an ID retainer. So if you're wondering about my opinion on cutting guides on Vortec heads, because you're going to notice a lot of the time I don't, and uh, there's a couple of reasons why. Uh, most of the time we're not running more than 550 lift, and I've showed you in my other videos, we can get away with 550 lift on a Vortec head without having to uh, machine anything. And we were oftentimes buying retainers and valve springs and stuff anyway. So just the extra time or cost for most guys to machine the guides down is oftentimes not necessary where, you know, I, I put v beehive springs on most of the Vortec heads I do. So I don't really need to cut the guides down. The, the second part being is it's a longevity thing. I don't know what it is. If you're not taking a whole lot off the guide, you're maybe taking 150 thou off the total length of the guide. But what I've noticed is the, the loosest valve guides I've ever seen come off of engines that have the valve guides cut down on the Vortec heads. There, I've seen intake valves unbelievably loose to the point where the engine is ticking so bad. It's still running, but it's the, the valve guides are so loose and it's huffing smoke. Uh, and that oftentimes they're cut down guides. I don't know if that has to do with the people that are doing them and there's issues, other issues, but it's just something I've noticed. Uh, if it's done properly, it's not a big deal, especially on my engines that don't see a lot of mileage. So don't freak out if your valve guides are cut down. Um, I just noticed the ones that are the loosest are oftentimes the ones with, with uh, cut down guides. The other thing is I like running uh, the factory style clad seals that fit directly on the vortex stock guides. Uh, and if you're, I'm going to spend money or do machining on heads, uh, I'd rather put guide plates in your best bet is, uh, you can run whatever offset you want with your, don't have to worry about siphon line and rockers, spend the money on putting guide plates on your vortex heads. So you can run any style rocker arm you want, like non, uh, non self aligning. Uh, and you don't have to worry about any valve tip height or anything like that. Cause you can get away with running, uh, just guide plates that is well money spent. Uh, you don't have to worry about pulling studs with heavier springs. Uh, so if you're gonna, if you're gonna try to save some money and you're not running more than 550 lift, spend your money on just getting guide plates put on. Missed anything in the video about running high lift? Comment below and let me know. Uh, I'll put the links for my other videos about setting up Vortec heads. Should answer a ton of questions for you guys that are new to setting up uh, valve springs. Uh, lots of detail about installed heights and stuff like that and uh, the, the checks for clearance. Uh, I'll put those links below. I'll also put the link for the workbench. Thanks again to Viver for setting me these benches. I really appreciate that and the support from you guys and all my subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. You guys have a Merry Christmas and stay safe out there.